if you're a regular, thank you, to this channel, you probably already know that I'm rather fond of my therma chisels. Now, the therma chisels are the chisels that aren't bevel edge chisels. You see, like that. And this is a bevel edge chisel because it's got a bevel on the edge. Now, some bevel edge chisels are pretty much just therma chisels, really. They're no good as a bevel edge chisel. But this one we restored. We did a video about it, didn't we, you know, um, a couple of weeks ago. And it's actually a really nice chisel to use. It always was, you know. And uh, I'll just give it another lease of life because the handle's getting a bit loose on the old, uh, um, on the blade and what have you. And the tang was, was all bent up and that. So, it was, so the actual chisel was bent. It wasn't very good like that. But it's still a really nice chisel to use. So we give it another lease of life. We also carbonated the handle. Yeah, set light to it, pretty much. So it's all black and sooty, then put a bit of linseed oil on it. And it feels nice in the hand now. The problem is when you would work with wood and what have you, you get glue on your hands and what have you, you put it on your tools and, and then they end up with some sort of like gluey type potato with little lumps on and stuff like that. So what we're going to do in this video, we're actually going to restore another chisel. And this one's a Braids cast steel chisel. Also a lovely piece of steel. Now if you can get hold of Braids cast steel, Buck, uh, Ward cast steel, Ward are really good they are. Um, you know, you've got a really good chisel and it's worthwhile holding on to them and, you know, give them another lease of life if they're looking a bit rusty and all that. And you can do that quite easy. And we'll do that in this video as well. We'll make these sort of shine this all up, yeah? Apparently, like, people like a shiny tool, apparently. <laughs> anyway, so the first thing I've got to do with this is actually remove the handle off the tang without damaging it. And as you can see here, it's starting to come out anyway. So it needs to be sorted out. I probably could get it back in a bit further if I tapped it a few times. Because that's kind of what I have to keep doing. I have to keep tapping it on the bench to get it back into the hand. It keeps working its way loose. Well, we're going to try and stop that from happening as well. And I'll show you that in this video. So first of all, we're going to remove the blade with its tang out of the handle. Then we're going to clean the handle up into a usable condition. You know, some people say that is usable, but it's not comfortable. I'll be honest with you. Now, you could make a new handle if you want. This happens to be a sort of ash or oak. It might be an oak handle, actually, looking at that. Um, but it's um, lumpy. Now, there's various ways you can clean that up. If you've got a lathe, you can spin it up on there. If you haven't, I'll show you a way you can do it with a drill. And it's actually really easy. All you need is one of these old things. This is a hand basin bolt. Basically, you screw it into the wall, and then you can tighten your hand basin to it. There'll be two of them, you see. Um, but it's also useful, this, for the, useful for this job, so I'll show you. Anyway, so we go over to the vice over there, and let's see if we can remove <laughs> the actual blade from the handle. Yes, it's very wobbly. Oh, that wasn't difficult. That wasn't difficult at all. And now what we'll do is we'll put this to one side, okay? And let's one clean this up on the wire wire wheel. You can just use a yeah. A white brush if you like and a bit of sandpaper that'll do the same job but we're going to do it on the wire wheel so i'm going to bring you over here yes we're going for a bit of a journey over to the wire wheel do -do 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 -do. down we come there it is right it's just the quickest way of doing it, it really is it, it just works so well now, what you've got to be careful of is you don't want to do up here, because what you do is to get caught and it just run off you know, against you. And it's not very pleasant when that happens. No. Okay, so, sorry, the audio went a bit all weird. I haven't got the radio mic on today. I've got a shotgun mic on. So, as you see there, all this rust there, we need to get it off, all right? Because that will prevent that being able to uh, adhere inside the handle. Because I tend to use glue these days as well, just to, to help it. And you could use Aldite, or you could use PU glue. Don't use PVA, but PU glue, because it expands and fills the space. So, don't place it up here, because it'll grab, and... It, uh, not a great idea, is it? So make sure you do it from under the wheel, alright? Because it's going to rotate in that way, and that way, you're, go, you're not going to hurt yourself. Up here, like I said, it will grab and throw it at you. Yeah, and then you'll be walking around like that. Blood pouring out everywhere, guts and stuff will be on the floor. Like when Animal Lecter did to that bloke in that chair and out of the balcony. Anyway.
You see how it removes all that nastiness? Right there. There's a build up of glue on there, it's all gone now. Just like that there, that's glue. Be careful, because if it grabs there, eh, it's going to pull your hand into it. So you've got to use control. I think that's good enough. We can actually, from that, we can um, titillate up, up, up now with some wet and dry paper. You can see it's took all the rust off here, what have you. And if you're wondering why my, this, we, this is actually removable. <laughs> it fits into slots, that's why it's moving. It's got a bit of vibration oh, there. And oh, well, the screws need to tighten as well, I see. Oh well, we will do that later. So, um, yeah. I'm quite happy with that. Let's take it back to the bench and let's get a bit of a polish up. Or should we do the handle first? Let's do the handle first. Let's clean the handle up. Now, I did mention there's two ways to do it. One, well, there's lots of ways to do it, but yeah, two ways that I'd probably end up doing the handle. One with a drill and that screw. So all you do is just place that in there like so. Okay. And then you uh, put it in a battery drill or any drill actually comes to that. Battery drill's back because that's um, electric drills probably will run a bit too quick. Yes, it's wobbly. Don't see, don't, don't show the misses now. You'll get excited if you if your wood wobbles like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh dear me. So I just literally just put it in my palm hand like so. And stand it. Simple, really, isn't it? So come off, look. So I've actually just screwed it into the hole. I don't want to screw it too tight in the hole. It's just a way of uh, slip, slipping it in the chuck. Like there you go. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is to actually put it in a lathe if you've got one. All right. So we'll do that as well. So we'll come over to the lathe. Take our sandpaper with us. We can do a better job in the lathe, obviously. And I've got a chuck in this lane, which is quite handy. Do, 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 do. Right, there's the chuck. We want stuff out of the way so I get the handle in. Let's plug the lathe in in a minute. I always unplug it because I think it actually uses power while it's off. Which is a bit stupid. It's got some sort of solenoid in there. Uh, I'm just going to place this into the chuck. I want to squeeze it too tight, I just want to grip it. I'm also going to use my centre as well on the end here just to centralise so it doesn't wobble too much. I actually don't need the um the tool rest. So that could actually come right out if I wanted to, but if I take it right out, it's all got it's got to fall out. Right. Oh, sorry, let's move it out right out. There you go. Well, tell that me move for a while. And sort of just line it into the centre before we tighten that up. Just want to make sure it's in the centre of the actual handle. 
do that and just push it to like so tighten it down into place eyeball it so it looks somewhere there doesn't have to be perfect and then i can tighten that into the end of the hand it will create a little dimple in the end obviously oh that's just not so little bit better there <sighs> turn that a couple of times yeah that's probably good enough it's not going to be perfect it doesn't have to be now what we'll do is we'll just tighten the chuck up and i winterize this over the winter basically I soak all this in oil it's covered in grime now so the dust and yuck but it's um that way it doesn't rust okay so there you are so that's in there i can't get in right in that right there i can't get in i could do a different chuck really um so i can't get all the way in but i can get most of it just paint here let's put that back once right all vibrate off right there so it all vibrate off So I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit and do that on the roller, on the pulley, sorry. It's a pain, this machine is. Doing that. There we go, up we go. Let's come up the speed. Sorry about that, I just, just kicked the camera. <laughs> Nice, this little area's here and a bit more work. On the back here as well. On his end here, you see the little marks. I know some people say, Oh, you've lost all the patina. I've got black in the hand anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. I like my tools to be useful. <laughs> Stained and might not be able to get that out. Hmm. 
I don't want, with a black and anyway, I don't want to necessarily take all the meat out of the handle. Do I? I think I do. I think I do. Because we've got black and anyway, so. Release the Kraken. So we still need a little bit more here. Go and do that by hand. Oh, the ferrule's come off. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. I'll do some of that with the electric drill actually then, because the ferrule's come off, and I'll polish that up on the wire brush as well. Maybe because I kind of warmed it up. Maybe that's why it fell off. It expanded. So that's come off there like so. Right, so we can polish it up now on the uh, the Y wheel. I'm going to go back to the old drill idea because I'll get these areas here. Then you see. And the sandpaper is areas. I don't want to sand that area there because I'll make it too loose. It won't fit the ferrule, will it? Make sure you go from underneath. No, you there. I said I want to sand that bit, didn't I? Then I sanded it. I'm losing my mind, you know. Oh, I must hit my knuckles. On the on the lathe. <laughs> You've got to get at least one injury, aren't you, when you you do a job, you know, a project. I'm sure that happens to you too. It could just be me, is it? Uh, maybe. It's doing the end. The end will be more dense because that's where you impact with the mallet. I hopefully with a mallet, not a hammer. Yeah, I'm alright. I'm not going to take out the drill. I'll leave it in the drill for a moment. And I'm going to blow torch it. Alright. <laughs> oh, where's my blow torch? Oh, yeah, it's up, dude. Yeah, this is a bit of a top video, as you can probably tell. Oh, it's fire. Fire. <laughs> That's one way of doing it. Oh, by the way, you have to turn your smoke detectors off. Actually works really well, doesn't like that. You could put pretty patterns on it, couldn't you? And I know what some people say, why are you doing this? Well, I like the look, which doesn't really make any difference to the usability of the tool, but what it does do, I find it, I can grip it better. The only thing to be careful of, you can make the wood brittle. Uh, it won't matter on a handle like this. You take a lot more moisture out, aren't it, near the surface? So I think that's probably nearly enough. Just got to do this end here a bit more. Put it in the drawer, it works, you know, makes it more uniform. My tool's on fire! Do you smoke? Mm -mm, yes, but only during the intercourse. <laughs> 
Right, oh, should I turn that off? That's a good idea, isn't it? There you go, turn that off. So that's now, oh, hot. So I could just leave, put it one side while I do the other work. I'll leave it here for a minute, let it cool down. Okay. I don't want to poke it at me. I don't want to touch it at the moment because it's blooming hot. Let's polish this uh, this up a little bit. All right, so I do that. Hello, Pandora. I've got a Pandora dog down in there. Here's a treat for you if you really must. There you go, girl. All right, so. 1200 wet and dry, it works a treat to clean these up. Yeah. I know we've already wire brushed it, and you could uh, argue that that's good enough. But I'm looking at the back, and this isn't, it's got a bit of, um, it's been polished off on the edges a bit too much, and it's not that flat. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this block here and just literally do that. So, um, let's set aside. Obviously, use something that's flat. Obviously, this isn't that flat, to be honest. So, um, you said a bit that. That's just for the purpose of this video, really. So, so I'm just going to basically move it backwards and forwards like so. I'm going to tell if it's flat. Boy. What's that on the back? There? Yeah, it's high in the middle and it's lower on the edges. And that's probably time to put it on the old um, machines and try to polish the back and what have you. And all I've done is actually round it off. So, it's just trying to do things too quickly and too much of a hurry. Tear -out hurry. Um, so what this does is it, it'll polish it off, but also flatten it. You can use wet and dry, you know, um, to sharpen your, your chisels. It's another way of sharpening them. And it can become expensive because you end up using a lot of paper. It's getting there, look. See? Polishing it off. So it does work. If you are going to use it for sharpener, only run this in one direction, that way, if you want your paper to last. Because what can happen is if when you sharpen, if you're going backwards or forwards, on the forward stroke, you can end up tearing your paper. I used to use sandpaper years ago. You know, it used to be like a fancy concept. You know, just, just do this. You watch all these videos and you start doing it that way and you realise, hang on, I keep buying all this paper, it'd be cheaper just to buy decent stones. <laughs> you know. I went back to oil stones in the end anyway, to be honest. I do like my oil stones. I do use diamond ones as well, but... I do prefer the oil stones, if I'm absolutely honest. Once you've got them, you've got them for years. They last a good long while, they do. So that's shining up nicely. It does require a bit more work. But I can do that once I've got the handle on. So just, I'm just trying to demonstrate that you can do it. And you can tile your chisels up. We're not sharpening this chisel in this video. That might be another video, but I've got so many videos on the channel about sharpening chisels. Um, and I can do that once I've got a handle on. I'm just trying to restore the chisel so I can, you know, get to that stage of um, sharpening it. And this is actually flattening it off. I don't know if you can see that, where it's darker on the edges. Along that edge there, it's darker. And I'm kind of polishing off the middle. Because the edges are lower than the middle. Unfortunately. So it's going to take a bit of work. But we won't do that all just yet. You could start with slightly coarser paper, speed it up a little bit, but then you've got to get rid of all those scratches, haven't you? So you might as well start with a fine, spend maybe, you know, a couple more minutes. Might not even be a couple more minutes. You might find it actually saves you time in the end. Yeah, that's doing it. Make sure you've got a looby tool, remember that? <laughs> oh, Craig, I've been doing this game for so long now. Since 19... Oh, as a business, since 1989, pretty much as soon as I got out of school, I went self-employed. Because my dad was. So I just kind of followed his footsteps, really, in many ways. A very practical man. There you go, it's getting there. For some reason, it's polishing more on this area. Ah, this is a forged. Didn't just cast it, it's forged. How can I tell that? Can you see that on that chisel? Bit like if you get Japanese chisels and stuff, you know, where they forge an, a different piece of steel on the end, which is going to be the sharpened piece of steel. And if you look here, there is a difference of colour, like shine there, just in front of the name. So you've got the punched name here, which say um, Braids, um, Braids Company. Yeah, and just about there, it's changing. They obviously fought this bit's been forged on, so it's cast and forged. What it looks like to me. I might be wrong. 
there's definitely a line in the, in the in the steel there. Is there a line on the back though? That bit there is. Yeah, there is. You can see it just there. So this isn't just cast. This is a forged, as in like it's two bits of steel being put together. That's pretty much it. And the idea of that is just so you don't have two brick. So the chisel's not brittle. You know, you want you want to have a little bit of malleable um, steel in that chisel. Uh, modern steels is not an issue with, but when these these older older tools, so a lot of work goes into a chisel. It's not just a piece of iron and they just sharpen it up, is it? They had to forge that out of two pieces. You know, that's nice. It's worth putting the effort in, you know. If you want a decent chisel, you can spend a lot of money on really good chisels, and they're all pretty much as much as all a lot of the chisels you buy are. Yeah, the steel of a certain grade, and it's the same steel they use across all sorts of brands of chisels. And this is from China. <laughs> or India, come to that. So you can spend quite a bit of time portion, portion, you know, these uh, tools with paper. Is it worth it? You have to ask yourself that. Yeah, that's going to be down to you. It might be, but it's quite a nice thing to do. You just sit there and just rub your tool, don't you? Yeah? You just keep rubbing until eventually something happens. <laughs> oh, behave! <laughs> so, of course, it's getting more and more obvious now the difference between the two steels. Can you just see that or not? You can just see that, can't you? See that difference in colour just there? That's where it's uh, changing from one steel to the next. In fact, actually, it goes all the way up there. It's quite unusual. Normally, it's further down. Yeah, made to last. That's what it is. They're made to last. And after all these, these chisels, crikey, how old are they? You know, eight years old, maybe something like that. I'll be a bit surprised. Might be even older because it ain't changed much over the period of time that they were in existence. Do you know what I need to get? I'm going to get see if I can find myself a nice piece of piece of marble or something, a nice machined, a, a nice stone or something that's machined. So it's got a yeah, perfectly flat, flat face. That'd be ideal for doing this sort of job, wouldn't it? Got any suggestions? What I could use? Piece of machined iron. Any problem with that is it'll uh, uh, rust. So it might defeat the object a little bit. Piece of machine stainless, I suppose. That's another option. Traditionally, it'd be like a bit of marble or something. You know, a nice polished, perfectly flat top. Just wondering what I've got that I could use for that. Hmm. I'll have to give that some thought. Just about the size, I don't know. But that's sort of big. It's not be very big, does it? If you're using it to, um, to, you know, to lap your chisels as well, couldn't you? If it's perfectly flat and hard. So it's doing the job on the back here, and if you just take the pitting out the back of the chisel, see? Remember what it was like a moment ago? That side there needs a bit more work. Probably could do some of that once with, um, so the video is ridiculously long, it's got to be long anyway. It's already 20 odd minutes long. Might fast forward some of these bits, but I'm not talking. All right, I think that's good enough for now. All right, we'll. I'll do some more work with that later. I've got to sharpen them up later as well, but it's not been done. I'm not doing that in this video. Okay, so we've got this ferrule. We've now got a tortured handle. <laughs> with some fine paper. So we can just uh, get the light go over so we don't end up with like black hands. Because obviously it's Like that. <laughs> Too late. Might have torched that a bit more, a bit more than I needed to. Let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it. Oh, I can't, can't grip it now. Where are they? Just getting rid of the soot. <laughs> Just take <think of> that. <laughs> I do have fun, I do. You need a bit of fun occasionally, don't you know? 
That's something you, I stuff in my head a little bit sometimes. I get a bit, you know, anxiety. Some anxiety. Um, some it's because I recently got diagnosed with um, fibromyalgia, which was a bit of a eye opener to say the least. And um, so that's about right now. Looks yeah, it's quite nice. Isn't it? But the thing is, he says, <laughs> um, when, it kind of explained my. Uh, I have periods of it. Uh, well, I feel down basically, or a bit overwhelmed, and then I get like. Um, Heart, heart palpitations and stuff like that, and um, there's no re reason for that apart, yeah. You know, but it is one of the um, effects of fibromyalgia. It's, it affects everything. I just didn't realise. Really didn't. It's it's got worse as well. I get a lot. I get a lot of pain. Unexplained pain, you know what I mean? There you go. And I've got my blackened handle. So I've got one coat of linseed oil. I build that up over a period of time. Let's remove the action out of there. Okay. We have our blade here. This is the bit I've got to watch here because I'm all oh, failed. I've got to clean it up as yet. That chisel, okay, the body of this chisel has been forced at some point. And this area here, that isn't the hard, hard steel, has a slight, very slight, I don't think you can see it, you probably can't see it, but there is a bend in it. And that affects how it sits in the handle. Actually, that's not too, not too bad then, actually. It might be the way around it goes. But if you look that way, can you see it's pointing that way a touch? It's not perfectly true, the handle. Is it a real problem? No. No, it's, it's not enough to, to bother anybody. It makes it quirky, and I like quirky, I do. Right, we've got to clean this up. Now, how am I going to do that? If I don't know why I will, the likely is it's going to whip it out of my hands. She do it, it's for fun. <laughs> Let's go back to the why I will, shall we? I could put the pair of pliers actually, that might be a good idea. I've got some long needle nose pliers here, which I also need to restore because they, uh, they've got rusty. Did they work? Sort of, that do. Right, so put them in there. And then things aren't, I've got to be careful of that because I don't want, I don't want to damage. The brass. It's only thin. Why they make them so thin, I don't know. They should be thick. But, you know, about, I don't know, at least three quarters of a mil. much improved yes yeah, a lot more tools in this workshop are quite old now but you know they still work it's just that they don't have much in the way of health and safety to be honest I'm not in the position to replace them so you know I'm going to insert this using PU glue. You could use um, Arrodite or something like that, you know, a two minute epoxy, five minute epoxy, 30 minute epoxy, doesn't matter. Yeah, you can all wait, can't we? Now, obviously, that's the way it was around. You can see it's got a real bed in it that way. So I'm going to make my choices. Now, one thing we can do, you see, is actually drive it in at an angle, all right? Instead of driving it in exactly the same place it was before, if, you've, if it's really slack, just twist it around a quarter of a turn, all right? Not even a quarter of a turn, eighth of a turn. So then you create a new cut. Well, basically, you're driving that in, that square. You're creating a new square at a slight angle. I see you in there already. Um, I'm not going to do that because it's actually got it's still reasonably tight, and I don't want to split the handle. I'm just going to decide on which way round I'm going to have it. I think it's going to be that way. All right? Ideally, you want to mark it. Oh, we're not a pen or something like that, just so you can 
see where it's got to go. Let's put a little tie dot on there, and I'll just lo lo line it up with the actual words on the on the actual chisel at the body itself, on the you know, on the actual blade. <clears throat> yeah, the fact this fibre though it also affects my um voice. My voice used to be quite high pitched, and I've lost uh, my vocal range. This happened in the last, mainly in the last year. First, I thought it was because I did YouTube and constantly talking. Um, but no, that's not it. I might be actually doing anything. Does it make it a bit more obvious? Because it's black, you see, it's black on black. <laughs> right, um, so we've got the ferrule, which is likely to be a little bit loose. Yeah, it's, it's a bit on the loose side. And now, I've got to ask myself what I'm going to do about that, the fact that it's loose. Do, do I, you yeah, know, because it's a bit. It should be tight that you should drive it on basically. Part of the reason why it's loose is because I think sand. It was loose anyway, to be fair. Um, but also, I've actually torched it as well, which I shouldn't actually. Well, you can't really. If you've got torch that, you're going to end up torching that, aren't you? Um, so, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put that on also with some PU glue. But I don't really want to, but I will put a little dimple in the side, maybe on opposite faces, and they'll grip the side of the wood. Or actually prevent it being able to pull off anyway, so. Because at the moment it's just going to constantly be loose. So we know it's going to go that way round. I did mark a handle, but I mark it. Was it there? there? That's where I marked it. Or was it there? Hang on, let's have a look at that again. Or was it that side? Oh, there, that's where I marked it. So that's the way round I want it. And then that's going to be driven into there like so. Quite happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's, I think that's good enough that regarding the angle. So make sure it's about that way. All right, let's place that over there. And now what we've got to do is we need to um, just bring it down a bit lower. Put this in the voice. Got some PU glue here. You store them upside down. All right, hopefully it'll come out without any aggravation. If it's upside down, there's oxygen getting in. All right, and then they ain't gonna go. Your glue's not gonna go off. Oh, yeah, that's that's. I'll just put that back on again. <laughs> Flaky. <laughs> I'll use a stick because it's been upside down. You see, I'll we'll put a bit of that in the hole. All right. Okay. We'll put, you don't need too much. Don't go crazy. A little bit. They'll be growing out of there for weeks on end. Otherwise, we'll put a bit on the tang. All right. Well, a little bit more than that. Oh my god. It's a gluey mess. PU glue is good, but it's so messy. Oh, I see people put windows together. I don't recommend it. I've done, I've done it, and it's um, what you find it, it carries on growing for weeks afterwards. It's not a good idea, I tell you. Not if you're going to hand something over to the customer. There. Oozing out the joints, you see. That's, that's in there. Got it on the tang. I also want it around the inside of this ferrule. Because it's going to be loose. Otherwise, I don't, want, I don't want to take too much glue. Don't need a lot of glue. All, it's, all I want to do is stop it from falling off, basically. The ferrule, that is, you know. Right, so that's there. Right, let's put it there for a second. Yeah, God, this stuff is nasty. <laughs> right, so I've got my tang. I've got my ferrule. Make my judgment. Where was it? Well, I put my mark. I think it was there. It was. You can see it. So holding it so it's in the right way. Round. I'm going to wiggle that round. The ferrule onto the handle. Get the worms out in a minute. Right. So that's on there. All right. But all I'm doing by wiggling it back and forwards is spreading the glue. Okay. So I've got a good coverage of glue around there. And it will expand. So bear that in mind. I know. That the, the words have got to go up against my mark, so that's the way round it's got to go. And then I'm going to ooze that into there. That felt a bit loose. I don't like that. That was too loose. I went in way too easily. I'm actually going to twist it. I've changed my mind because that was too, too, too loose. So what I'm doing is I'm going to drive it in, at, twist it around a little bit. So I'm not going to, the, the arras is on the tang. We'll cut a new square into the old square, the flats of the old square inside the handle. So let's place that back into there. Uh, in this case, I'll put the... Oh, 
the blade or the body of the chisel into there and then we'll make sure that's on just at a slight angle like so where it, we'll use my full hammer and tap it on so it's tight now okay now that's tight it was way too loose the ferrule itself needs to be pushed up all right and that ferrule will tighten up and we will get glue oozing out of that it's tight it's good because it's just the nature of um, pu glue you know it's just it has its uses and i think it's quite a good use for it actually it works really well because it fills all the voids stops it from what's that that's better you see it's it's growing already out of all the little nooks and crannies that's a lot of white and frothiness see pu um polyurethane wood glue it's pretty much the same stuff they use in those squirty cans to go around your windows and stuff to stick the windows in with <clears throat> losing my voice i am already but it's growing even more and you can keep wiping that off if you like or you just leave it and cut it off afterwards so i'm quite happy that's in there what i do what i do though with that ferrule is put a little dimple in the ferrule all right to do that i'm just going to use a punch not that punch no That's not a punch. Well, it's a punch. It's now a nail punch. Or a centre punch. There you go. I've got one there. Here's a centre punch. Here's a ball peen hammer. Okay, but don't try and push that off. Good, I think it's all the way there. Make sure it's always in the handle as well, because if it's there's in. I don't know if it could, but I suppose there's a possibility the glue, because it's expanding, could push the actual um uh handle back off again. Or the ferrule off. I'm guessing. Probably I'd like to get it really. And I'll use a centre punch and I'm gonna do the back of the ferrule, not the front of the ferrule, because you don't really want to see it, do you? So I'll do the back of the ferrule. I'm just going to give a little, little tap on there, okay? So basically just there, like so. It creates a little dimple, okay, on the opposite face that grip into the wood so it doesn't twist off. So I'm pretty happy with that. Just grab a rag and start cleaning that off because it's getting on my nerves. Wow, that looks so nice. Alright, so we'll spend a bit more time, but not in this video. <sighs> Polishing that up. Make it a bit more like that one. Okay. And then give it a good old sharp and then hone up on the actual diamond stones and oil stones and what have you. Until I'm happy that it's a good tool again. What do you reckon? It's quite nice really, isn't it, no? Huh? Especially if I polish that up. Huh? I reckon so. If you don't like it, write a letter. I'm not giving you my dress. No, not dress. A dress. Because I be. I don't wear a dress, no. Not on Wednesdays, only on Fridays. <laughs> anyway, please boot the old like button. And, you know, let me know what you would like me to make a video about. Leave it in the comments down below. And I'll see if I can oblige. Okay? Boot the old like button and maybe subscribe to the channel because then you get one fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video yeah that's probably ridiculously long way too long for the topic <laughs> i can't stop talking no. toodaloo